In this second video, as we look at the fundamental counting principle and permutations, I have a couple of examples to quickly run through for you. So, the first one says, at a blood drive, blood can be labeled one of four types, A, B, AB, or O, one of two RH factors, either positive or negative, and one of two genders, either female or male. How many different ways can blood be labeled? Well, this is similar to the example we had with the different kinds of bread and meat, and also the different uniform combinations that the Pacer football team might wear, where these three factors here, the type, the RH factor, and the gender, are three independent events. That being the case, to find the total number of combinations we might come up with, we're going to multiply those things together. So, I'm going to take the type times the RH factor times the gender. And I'll think about how many of each of those I have. Well, type, there's four different types. There's two different RH factors, and there's two different genders. Multiplying those together, 4 times 2 times 2 is 16 different ways in which we could label blood. Next example right here. You're given a random four-digit personal identification number, or PIN, to use with your bank card. Each of the digits is a whole number from 0 to 9. How many different four-digit pins are possible if the digits can be repeated? Now, as you set this one up, I think with a lot of these problems, the best way to work it is by drawing a couple of blanks. As in, I'm going to figure out, well, I need four digits, right? One, two, three, four. And then I think about how many options do I have for each of those digits. Well, as I think about what might be the first digit in my pin number, I'm given the possibility of using the numbers 0 through 9. Well, that would be 10 different possible options that I could put in that first place. Now, how many options would I have available for the second digit? Well, it says that they can be repeated, which means all 10 of those digits are still available for me to choose for my second number of my pin. Same with the third and with the fourth. And because these are, once again, independent events, according to the fundamental counting principle, I can multiply them together. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, we got 10 to the fourth different possible pin numbers. Now what if, right underneath it, suppose that the digits can't be repeated, how might that change what we had going on here? Well, here's how I want you to think about this. Again, four different digits that we need to fill in. We've got 10 options for that first digit, because 0 through 9 are all available for us. Now because the digits can't be repeated, now I only have nine choices left for that second digit in my PIN number because one of them had to be used for the first digit. Now for the third digit, I'm down to just eight options. For the fourth digit, I'm down to seven options. Once again, these are independent events, so we're going to go ahead and multiply them all together. Take 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, and you have the number of four-digit PINs that are possible if you can't repeat digits. And again, I'll let you type that into your calculator and get your own answer there. Third example, license plates. Standard configuration for an Alaska license plate is three letters followed by three digits. How many different license plates are possible if letters and digits can be repeated? How many different license plates are possible if letters and digits cannot be repeated? So, let's do the can be repeated first. Again, I think setting this up, I would go ahead and put, let's see, my license plate's going to look something like this. It's going to have six parts to it, right? It said three letters followed by three digits. So here I've got letters and here I've got digits. I'll just put L and D to represent those. So how many different letters do we have available to us as we think about our first choice? Well, there's 26 letters in the alphabet, so that means we have 26 options for that first space on our license plate. Because we can repeat letters and digits, we have 26 options available for the second one and 26 options available for the third one. As far as digits are concerned, we're looking at digits from 0 to 9, so we've got 10 options for the first, 10 options for the second, and 10 options for the third. Again, because we are allowed to repeat digits and letters. Once again, these are all independent events. Fundamental counting principle tells me that I can multiply those all together. So I take 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10, and you'll have a rather large number, which is probably a good thing because you need a lot of license plates there are a lot of cars being driven around in the United States of America. Now the second option, we've got 
where our letters and digits can not be repeated. So the license plate is going to look the same. Three letters followed by three digits. So we got three letters followed by three digits. Now, I still have 26 options for the first letter, but because I can't repeat letters, after I choose whatever letter that might be, I now have only 25 options left for the second letter and 24 for the third. When I get to the digits, I've got 10 available at first, but then I'm, I have to drop down to 9 options for the second and 8 options for the third. Again, because I'm using one of those digits and I take it away as being an option for the next one. Fundamental counting principle says multiply all of these things together. You multiply those six numbers together, you get another rather large number, but it shouldn't be as large as the one you had when you were able to repeat letters and digits. Hopefully that makes sense and gives you a little bit uh, more intuition as we work with the fundamental counting principle.